Okay, everybody, let's take a look and see what happened in the stock market today. We're looking at the S&P 500 futures. That symbol is ES. You can also trade the MES, okay? Forward slash MES. We're looking at the December 2021 contracts, okay? Let's take a look at what's going on here today. It ended up at 46.92 at the close. The market just closed. Let's see what time we got here. About seven minutes ago. So making this video fresh after the futures market close, which it closes at four o'clock Central Standard Time in the great state of Texas. All right. So you can see the 50 day moving average. You always want to keep an eye on this 50 moving average. Okay. Since we're talking about a daily chart, this is 50 day moving average right here. We continue to see a large discrepancy or a big distance or amplitude right down here. The amplitude percents at four and about a third. Yeah, it's pretty high. That's a pretty good distance between the bottom of the candlestick and the 50 day moving average. All right. But something stands out about this day that we haven't seen this in a long time. Well, we saw it once like right here. Okay. That's not the only time we've seen it. What am I talking about? We didn't get an all time new high guys. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit closer because we got to take a look at this. Are my eyes deceiving me? <laughs> I don't think so. Look at that. We did not get an all-time new high. The high today was 47.07. It fell, well, you know, whatever that is, four, four points and change short of the all-time high. And, and stay with me on this because we're going to look at the hourly chart and look at that action, okay? But yep, that's, that is potentially, believe it or not, a significant event. Because look at this, guys. Almost every day, with a few exceptions, like right in here, was an all-time new high. This is the only two days from one day to the next that we didn't get an all-time new high, as far as I can tell. Okay, or at least the high of the day, if you want to put it that way. The high of the day exceeded the previous high of the day every time. Every time, except this candlestick right here didn't precede the high of that one. Other than that, every high was higher than every other candlestick all the way back, all the way back to October 13th. Okay, so what does that tell us? We have a, a change in behavior. And for those that have been around my channel for a while, you may remember that I talked about change in behavior, dun, 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 back over here. Okay, it's not the same, obviously, because this was quad witching. Okay, but we have a change in behavior, guys. It's as clear as day that that is a change in behavior. Oh, yes, sir, it is. Mark my words. That's a change in behavior. That doesn't mean we're going to get the epic crash tomorrow, necessarily, though it could happen. Okay, that's a change in behavior. So, number one, we've got this huge gap between the 50 day and the bottom of today's candlestick as it continues. And the percentage. I believe went up even higher today. Yeah, it was four and a quarter on Friday, and today it's four point four and a third. So this continues to grow. So the, the low is higher today than Fridays, but the high is lower. Yeah, that's a significant event. Take note of that event right there. Mark my words, could make big difference. What else are we seeing? On the big daddy and on the SMI. We've got serious divergence signals popping up here. Let's see, when was that? That was Friday and the close of the day. Both two days in a row now, guys. We've got these red divergence flags showing up. And these little dots. So those that don't know what that means, I put some logic behind the Big Daddy forecast and the SMI, which is short for Stochastic Momentum Index. That logic says, go look for a divergence. White ones mean three or four day divergence could be either one yellow ones which I, there's one way over here you might not be able to see it, but there's one right there that means a 12 day divergence and red one red ones mean that there's a yellow and a white happening at the same time so this today we had a 12 and a three or four day divergence happening at the same time and also on friday it happened yeah that's pretty significant guys it's pretty significant all this together tells me we got a little bit of a stall on the highs. We got divergence signals starting to show up. 
We got the amplitude percent above 4%. That's why it's red. We have the RSI sitting down here at 76.58. What was it on Friday? 76.09. So even that's gone up. It's in the red zone too, even though it looks like a pink. Okay. Amplitude percent, by the way, guys, my own indicator. I just came up with that last week. I'm really liking it. It's a little bit different than the RSI. They look similar, but it's a little bit different. Much easier equation than this, than this thing down here. The RSI is kind of complicated. Okay, looking pretty good. Let's take a look at the monthly. Always want to look at the monthly and get the big picture. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. Yeah. 29 and two third percent distance between the bottom of this candlestick and the 50. Now we're looking at 50 month moving average. That is huge. Absolutely huge. Okay. The RSI is, is pretty high. It's, it's, it's in its red zone or pink zone here, 74. Okay. And on the monthly, we are getting the divergence signal. We got it, was it last month? Yeah, we got a divergence signal. It wasn't as, it, it's only white, so it's three months instead of 12 or, or even red, which would be both, like back in here when it showed up. Okay, and we had those two months right there, September and October. Um, yeah, of last year, not this year. Okay. So the, the biggest thing that stands out to me more than anything else is this massive distance between the monthly candle, bottom of the candlestick, and the 50-month moving average. So, you know, if we just look at this thing as moving averages, you know, most of the time are moving up, but not always. It's moving up like that. And if this thing starts to peel back a little bit, who knows where this is going to meet? Hard to say. Maybe it kind of tapers off. I don't know. I don't know. Somewhere in the middle of 2022, maybe. I don't know. It might be a quick four-month thingy. Okay. But we're too, it's too early to say that for sure for now. But definitely seeing some, you know, look at this number here, guys. Look at this number. 438 on the Big Daddy. 438. What was it back over here? 438. <laughs> Then we got that red candlestick. What was it over here? 420. Okay. Let's bring in the whole ball of wax. Let's look at the big, big picture. That one was 397. I'm looking for anything that exceeded it. 423. 405. What's this big, big number? 469, guys. Wow. Back in November of 2014. Yeah. And then July of 2016 was 450. So you can see, guys, it doesn't happen that often. We get higher than we are right now in the Big Daddy. 420. Okay. It's like only a few times that we've been higher than we are right now, this 438 number. Okay. Usually we get up in this area, guys, above 440, get into 450s. Uh, the, the, the pricing starts to give it back and we start seeing a decline in price. Okay. So please be aware that the S&P 500 is showing some weakness long term. Okay, let's look at the weekly. See what's going on here. Yeah, lots of divergence signals going on in the SMI. Okay, but that's kind of not that big of a deal because it's just come out of a low. So we got to be careful not to get false flags. But we are near 11% on the amplitude. This right here, 11%. So the distance between there and there is 11%, well, 11% of this price, 11% of 46.92. That's pretty big. I've seen a few times get up to 14, okay? But this is pretty high territory, near 11%, guys. This is pretty high. Guys and gals, that's a pretty high number, okay? We're beginning to see both the Big Daddy kind of taper off here. And the SMI is beginning to close in on itself a little bit, but we, it's not rolled over yet on the weekly. Okay, now this is obviously a fresh week and the candlestick looks really small. Okay, but, but, okay, yeah, so we'll keep an eye on this candle. This is going to be, this is going to be a week, guys. We're going to really keep an eye. The range on this candlestick is 30. Okay, we've had some other small ones. But usually 51, 68. Okay, we had some small. This was 57, even though it looks small, but the, the wicks give us more range. 
Okay, really tiny one way back here was even 43. So we're really going to keep an eye on the range for the weekly because that's going to give us a heads up if something's going on with price decline. Especially if we get a lower wick starting to show up. And you don't get a, you don't get the wick going high, but you get the wick going low. Oh, yeah. You start seeing a lower wick but not an upper wick. Mm-hmm. All right. So there's, there's not alarm bells going off yet. Okay, let me go look at the – let's switch over to hourly, guys. Okay. I think I'll switch over to hourly. Okay. We're still seeing on the hourly chart resistance, right? Resistance. And then again at the end of the day, resistance. So we're still getting resistance. It's not it's not breaking through the 50 hour moving average. You know, it doesn't happen that often. All the way back to since 8 a.m. on October 28th. We've been above, pretty much above this 50-hour moving average all the way since here, guys. Okay, October 28th, 8 a.m., we've been above it. Bam. Bam. Little one right there. Bam, right there. So we're still staying above it. Okay, we haven't seen today. It didn't break below this 50-hour really strong at all, right? Just kind of messed around over here overnight. It tried to get down there around 11 a.m., okay? Guys, the S&P 500 futures, remember you can also trade the MES. I mentioned that earlier. Okay. The S&P 500 futures, guys, it's a different beast. Okay. It's so heavily traded. Okay. Retail investors, like I said earlier before in other videos, they're like piranha, right? They just want to push this thing higher, higher, and higher. Okay. So be aware that the, that the S&P 500 doesn't trade the same that a lot of other futures products and commodities trade. Okay. It doesn't exactly trade the same way. You need to be aware of that. So when it breaks below this 50 hour, then we can start paying attention. Though I want to do, I do want to say that we get a little bit of warning here on the SMI of a 12 hour divergence, but nothing lately going on on the big daddy. Now, something I want to take note of right here. You see this red, hopefully you can pick this up in the video. There's a red dot right there. Okay. Which pretty much lines up with probably one of these. I think it's this candlestick here. Or maybe that one, okay? But uh, two hours later, bam. Okay? We saw some yellows, and we got a red, and then we got a white. Let's see exactly where that red showed up. It showed up right there. Happened to be 6 a.m. on November 5th, okay? And then we got some whites, which would be three-hour divergences. Okay? A blank, a blank, nothing going on. Then right at the peak, guys, we got another three-hour divergence, okay? So those divergences, when you start to see red divergence, whether that's daily, monthly, on the hourly, a lot of times you're going to see the price pull back, okay? So just a heads up that even though we don't have that going on on the Big Daddy, you know, if we do see that show up, like a, a white and a yellow and a red come start showing up in the hourly, guys, then we really want to pay attention, okay? Of course, I'll let everybody know if that happens. Okay, one last look at the daily. Just, oh man. Wow. On the hourly, guys, we're bouncing off that 50. And bam, and bam, and bam. But on the daily, guys, I got to give a, a warning. Just be really careful. I'm not saying you shouldn't trade it, but we didn't get a higher high today. That, to me, signifies weakness in the market. I don't know how weak. And we've got some divergent signals that are red. That's pretty hot. Please make sure you got your stop losses in place. If it was me, of course, educational video only, guys. We're talking paper trade only, right? Okay. Paper trade, educational video only. Okay. You're responsible for your own trades. But if it was me, I'd keep my positions definitely a little bit on the smaller side. And I would definitely have my stop losses in place. Okay. Because the feeding frenzy, guys, may come to an end. Just as a heads up based on what I'm seeing here, guys. It's looking like... There's something going on here with the way these, this candlestick reacted today and the way we're getting divergence and the amplitude percent is red hot. That distance there is red hot, okay? Okay, guys and gals, listen. I've had a lot of people ask me about, am I going to put out a subscription service? Well, do I provide you know, premium service? Because some people have really been asking about this. Well, I'm happy to announce that, yes, I just implemented a premium service, okay? So... You can join it for, five, I think it's $5.95 a month, guys. It's super cheap, okay? That's a great value. Take advantage of it while you can, guys. I'm going to put out two, probably a minimum of two videos a month, okay? Basically just talking about opportunities that I think are going to be really good 
educational only video like i said it's going to be paper trade what you do with that paper trade is up to you okay you're responsible for your own trades okay i don't give financial advice okay but but that's what i'm going to be putting out once or twice a, twice a month a video for premium members only okay and guys and gals if you can't make five or six bucks on a trade well you know okay then you know go back to the drawing board and you know and maybe spend some more time becoming a better trader okay but that's an extremely good value. So take advantage of it while you can because if I start getting a lot of members, guys, I'm going to have to jack up the price because there's going to be more support involved, okay? Subscribe to my YouTube channel, guys and gals. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to click that little bell to be notified of all the videos I put them out. Happy trading, everybody. We'll talk to you all real soon again next time.